Abbey Road is just not a studio of the past, but it's certainly a studio of the future. Maybe it's just because I'm old school and because I love what Abbey Road represents in my life. I want to share that because people taught me music by sharing with me what other music had meant in their life. And you are? Loose. Hey, oh, that's how you pronounce yes. it. Yes. So many massive rock and roll records were made here. Uh, people don't believe that it was just done by accident. They think that there's some magical thing in Abbey Road. The uh, truth of the matter is I feel like that magical thing exists in the artist. But artists are superstitious. And Abbey Road, in a strange way, as soon as we walk in, a lot of that bonding that needs to take place between artist and producer happens almost instantly. That is a scene from the new documentary entitled If These Walls Could Sing, premiering next Friday on Disney+. Plus. The film explores the storied history of the world's most famous recording studio, Abbey Road. And joining us now, someone with a very personal connection to Abbey Road, the film's director, Mary McCartney. It's great to have you back in the show and to see you on per in person. I know. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. So if these walls could sing, what's the answer to that question? I mean, nobody knows. And Abbey Road has been part of your life for as yeah. long as you can remember. So you have such special insight. And yeah, exactly. When I was approached to direct this documentary, um, I, I messaged my um, the woman that looks after my mum's archive and said, are there any pictures of me at Abbey Road as a kid? You're like, are there? And she texted me back immediately with this picture of me as like a three-month-old baby on a blanket on the floor oh. in the studio. And I was like, should I do this documentary? Is it too close to home? And then when I saw that picture, I was like, of course I'm going to do it. It's like, so grown the, up there. The photo was the inspiration. It was. That and then the other inspiration was a picture I'd seen with, of my mum leading a pony called Jet across the zebra crossing, which I saw in the Abbey Road book like years before. So I was like, I need to do it. Wow. And also, I didn't know it. It was 90 years old, and I did not know any of the history. So, so I tell us to learn. about the experience of this documentary. If these walls could sing, what's the answer to the question? The answer to the question is. It's an amazing special place. It's, it's really busy still to this day. What was quite funny is when I was filming the interviews, it was hard to get space to do the filming in the studios because it's so busy still. So um, the, the answer is yes, it's a magical place. It has this sort of spiritual artisticness to it. And I think watching the documentary, a lot of people don't get the chance to go there. They go to the Zebra Crossing and there's like a pilgrimage to go there. And it means so much to so many people. But in doing the documentary, by the end of it, I think you have a feeling that you've been inside and you get the atmosphere and you understand why it means so much and, and, you it, know, and what, creates so much. When Mary says zebra, she's referring to zebras. Zebra. Just, yeah. just for, for anybody who's so up. Cute. For anybody who speaks so the American, cute. the American version of the English language, um, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with I, zebra. I prefer zebra. Can I say zebra. something, yeah. though? I, sure. learned my, I think I learned my alphabet through yeah. uh, the Muppets. Yeah. So when oh, I was a kid, I used I to say A, B, and then I said Z, and my dad would say, it's Z. Yes. It's Z. Like Z. And just, and just in case anybody's curious, just in case anybody's confused, your dad, yeah. the McCartney, Paul McCartney, yeah. right? Your that dad's one. Right? Just so, just in case dad. anybody's like confused about that, you know, the, the, it's an amazing. The movie's great in in a bunch of ways. One is like 90 years. I mean, I think most people think of Abbey Road as being. They started with the Beatles, yeah. you know, which obviously is a big part of the movie. But mm. you go back to 1931 and and talk about this that this studio has been arguably the best studio in the world for almost a century, which is sort of mind-blowing. Yeah. I mean, I really learn it's the people that work there, the, te yeah. the technicians, the producers, and it's got a real family atmosphere. And what I learned was that they really do look after the artists, so they facilitate whatever they need. They don't give you a hard time. They're not a buzzkill. They're kind of like, we're here. We're going to make the best music we can. And it's still the same today. And they haven't changed. Yeah. Studio One and Studio Two are the same, so they haven't messed with it. So you there, still get that experience. There's a great, I mean, look, there, we saw now Rogers a minute ago. There, you go through this, you get to see, you know, Jimmy Page uh, when he was a session musician and, and, uh, and Elton John when he's first, like, getting paid to play the piano for people. 
Yeah, but you, but your dad and the Beatles run through the heart of it, right? And I guess I'm curious about about you know watching the various beats of it. You know, the creation of Sergeant Pepper, the you know your dad tapping his foot while he plays Blackbird. You know, and how that got picked up by the mics in the studio. You know, you spent a lot of time talking to him and, and mm. doing the interviews. Did you learn, were there things that you learned from your that you yeah. did not know? What were the things mm. that your dad, as you talk through it, that you learned for the first time? Well, I learned things like the thing about Abbey Road Studios is they have a lot of things lying around. So the pianos, like the famous piano on Lady Madonna mm. is called Mrs. Mills Piano because it was just in studio too because there's a woman called Mrs. Mills who used to do... Um, her albums there, so they were like doing it, and they're like, so a lot of things that just were hanging around in Abbey Road worked their way onto some of the Beatles tracks, yeah. which I didn't know any of that. Yeah. So As we have another scene from the documentary oh, that yeah. we want to show our viewers, where you actually talk about why Abbey Road, uh, the studio, holds such a special place in your heart. My name is Mary. Abbey Road Studios has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. Every time I walk through these corridors, it feels magical. I don't remember the first time I came here. This is me in Studio 2, a photograph taken by my mum, who was a photographer and was in a band with my dad. I want to tell the story of some of the iconic recordings made here over the last nine decades, from classical to pop to film scores. One of the reasons I wanted to do this documentary was I remember seeing a picture of Mum leading Jet across the zebra crossing. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, what happened was we lived close by, as you know, and um, we had this little pony called Jet. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Just spectacular footage, oh, the adorable photo of you as the baby. But let's, let's, let me ask you a little bit about that moment there with your father. What is that? What was that like talking to him about a place that was so important to you or to not just to the music world, but to your family? Um, it's a little nerve wracking in a mm -hmm. way in that the interviews in the documentary, all of them, including dad's are really important because there's not a lot of archive. I didn't know going in, you know, it's not etiquette to take pictures and film in a recording session. You mm -hmm. kind of don't do that. So I was like, what, what footage, footage am I going to use? So the interviews were really important. Um, so I just made it as relaxed and as nice a situation. I did them, I'd, I interviewed Dad in Studio 2, which is the famous studio that they were in. I put a few instruments around so he could play. Yeah. And I just made it as relaxed. But I had been talking to him about it because he loves the studio so much and everyone I interviewed, like Elton John, he wanted to be in, the in, in it because he wanted to tell his recollections of the place. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he, he was very giving. I think it's a very relaxed interview with him. Super relaxed. And, it's, it's and very... He was keen to sort of tell the, me and the viewer about it. Everybody's very keen. Like, all the interviews, yeah. because you can tell they're very much, they want to be there. It's yeah. like there's there's not a lot of pulling of teeth, and people are very are very free with their recollections with you yeah. uh, about, what they, about their fondest memories of what happened in the studios. I mean, I used a lot of my techniques, my bag of tricks from being a portrait photographer mm. of, like, knowing probably what you guys do you need to make sure the person when they get in the seat is happy and looked after so nicely lit and you know I kind of tried to make it so that you feel relaxed when you sit down and it's also a beautiful interaction between father and daughter which I've, I've interviewed my dad and it didn't mm. go as well actually gone as well okay well, I was like please let it play please please let make it. it go well yeah <laughs> he I mean, showed it depends up for you what mood you're in on the day I know everything. but it's daunting to interview I mean I <laughs> at least Jordan I'm, I can't even talk now I'm thinking also, about it he's been... I want to go back and watch it <laughs> yeah say that tomorrow it is it's nerve-wracking and it um and in the sense that he's been photographed and filmed by right. all of the most major Exactly. Photographers and well, directors then someone in the world. like Elton John too. Yeah. And you said he was revealing. What did you learn from sitting down with him? Well, uh, I wanted to show in the documentary session musicians, and then going through the session um, log, we found that Jimmy Page and and Elton John, Reginald Dwight, as he was then, mm -hmm. were session musicians, and so. Uh, 
Yes, there's, we actually managed to get the tape so you can isolate his, you know that song, He Ain't Heavy? Yeah. So, yeah, so basically we can isolate his his key, his piano in it and you can totally tell that it's Elton John playing. Wow. Oh, that's it's crazy. So his style and it was like early 60s, so. But he was very keen and he also has a funny story. It came out that as I talked to more people, they were like, oh, we were there and then your dad like came into the studio and was like, and I was like, how many times did he like gate crash on the <laughs> <laughs> but he came in apparently and Elton John was like, oh, do you want to hear our new song and played Let It Be on the piano? Oh, so. yes. Wow. Mika, yeah. this is something for you to learn here. You know, the other thing is that her dad came back to Abbey Road with her mom, and oh. there was a Wings recorded there also. And that's actually another thing, and this thing is really kind of lovely to, you know, your, your mom's, your mom's, your missing mother is a kind of spectral yeah. presence throughout. Yeah. As the emotional thing of the movie, I think it feels like mm. you're, she's, she's in a lot of the footage, yeah. a lot of the photographs. It's really nice. Chills. She's yeah. a lot of the inspiration yeah. behind it. If These Walls Could Sing premieres next Friday on Disney Plus, and we also wanted to quickly mention your wonderful cooking show, Mary McCartney Serves It Up, Thank has you. returned for an all new third season. Yeah, she does on it all. Discovery Plus. Wait, she does it all. I need to cook. Mary McCartney. My I, God. I like I'll bring you food next time. Okay, I'm no, I, I'm, I'm it all. and it's healthy. I like yes. it. I want it's to do It's satisfying. That. I love shortcuts, though. Yeah, me too. Shortcuts, easy. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on. It's so nice thank to see you. you. And still ahead on.